Dr. Watson, your memoir tonight is entitled The Adventure of the Three Garadevs. Well, what in the world is a Garadev? Well, that's a gentleman's name, Mr. Harris. And the peculiarity of the name Mr. Harris has a great deal to do with our story. Holmes once said about this story that he didn't think in all our explorations of human complexities we had ever come upon anything more singular. It was January 1895. On Waterloo Road, at a gaming club, two men were playing cards. No, you don't, Evans. That's not the card you buried in the deck. It certainly is, Prescott. You didn't show the six of clubs, you showed the four of diamonds. I've been playing blackjack too long to be careless about such details. I said I showed the four... You're a rotten, double-dealing faker. Why, you cheap, dirty mouth You must have been cheating all along. I want my money back, every bit of it. And I want it now. Also, help me, I'll break your neck. You know I played fair. You just want your money because you can't stand loose. Give me that money. I'll give you this. So you carry a gun, Prescott, huh? Well, if you like fireworks... Following that exchange of shots, Roger Prescott died. And his gambling partner, Killer Evans, who'd been quicker at the draw, served six years in prison. It was a short sentence because he proved Prescott drew a revolver first and that he had shot in self-defense. After his term was over, Evans disappeared into the dim, fog-bound world of men released from prison. One morning in late June of 1902, I was present when Holmes had an odd visitor at the flat on Baker Street. It was this first seemingly pleasant visit that was to lead us to the discovery of a great crime. Mr. Holmes, pray sit down, sir. You are, of course, Mr. John Garadev. Uh, may I present my colleague, Dr. Watson? How do you do, sir? Mr. Garadev? As for your problem, sir, your friend, Mr. Nathan Garadev, has already invited me to be of assistance. Yes, yeah, so he told me. That's why I've come. Nathan Garadev? And you're John Garadev? Uh, brothers, perhaps, eh? No, they're not brothers, Watson. No doubt John here will explain it concerns this document in my hand. Oh, uh, Nathan sent that, did he? He did, but with precious little explanation. If we might have a clear account from you... Uh, in the presence of... Of Watson, certainly. We usually work together. Well, years ago in the United States, there was a man named Alexander Garadev. A third Garadev? Really, I'm rather confused about it. <laughs> it's simple, Doctor. Alexander Garadev made his money in real estate. He bought land along the Arkansas River. He became fabulously wealthy, but he'd no relatives. And he developed a strange mental quirk. Which was? Well, he took a kind of pride in the queerness of his name. Garadev. I, I had a law practice then in Topeka, and there we met. I imagine he took a liking to you, since your name was also Garadev. Exactly, Mr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. His pet fad seemed to be to find out if there were any other Garadevs in the world. In fact, when he died, he left a very queer will. The document I have in my hand. That's it. You see, his property was divided into three parts. I was to have one. Provided two other Garadevs were found to share the remainder. Well, is it a considerable sum? Five million dollars to each man. <sighs> Fantastic. Yes. And since the sum was so gigantic, I set aside my practice to find two more gentlemen named Garadev. There isn't one in the United States, so I tried England. And here in London, you found a Mr. Nathan Garadev, my client. Two days ago, at 136 Little Ryder Street. I located him with the London Telephone Directory. Well, you're very fortunate. Does he have relatives? No, none. And the will states that all three Garadevs must be adult males. Hmm. Whimsical, eh, Watson? Mr. Garadev, have you tried advertising in the agony columns of the newspapers? Yes, I have. No replies. It's a most curious little problem. Oh, by the way, you mentioned having come from Topeka. I had a correspondent there once, who's uh -huh. dead now, old Dr. Lysander Starr, who was mayor in 1890. Oh, yes, a wonderful chap. I knew him intimately. Really? Intimately. Uh, well, Mr. Holmes, we must find a third man named Garadev somewhere in the globe or lose millions. We depend upon you, sir, as well you may. I shall communicate any new development to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Well, Watson, I haven't indulged in such a conversation for a long, long time. What do you mean? I mean that everything Mr. John Garadev said here in this flat just now was a lie. What? Every word a lie. Why? A brightly colored camouflage, Watson, very deceiving. But underneath it... I wonder what hideous crime. Dash it all, Holmes. I've, I've permitted you to smoke your pipe and meditate long enough. Hmm. 
Your faculty of keeping silent at the proper moments, my dear Watson, is one of the most impressive recommendations as a companion. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, tell me, why did you say John Gerard died? His English coat was frayed at the elbow and his trousers bagged at the knee with a year's wear. And yet he claims to be a provincial American recently landed in London. Aha! Uh -huh. He placed no advertisements in the agony columns. You know I miss nothing there. Yes, do go on, Holmes. There isn't any Dr. Starr in Topeka. I invented the old conjure. I see. But John claimed to have been his close friend. Precisely. Touch our Mr. John Garideb where you will. He's false. How do we arrive at the truth, Holmes? By visiting the other Garideb, Nathan, at Little Ryder Street, as quickly as a carriage will take us. <laughs> This is Nathan Garideb's residence, Watson. Yes, I'll, I'll ring, Holmes. Hmm, we begin on firm ground. Nathan Garideb is indeed this gentleman's real name. How could you know that, Holmes, before we've even met him? Observe, Watson, the brass nameplate by the door, especially its discoloured surface, up some years. Oh, yes, of course, now that you've pointed out. Yes, what is it? Mr. Nathan Garideb? I am Sherlock Holmes. This is my friend, Dr. Watson. Oh, do come in, gentlemen. Thank you. This way, gentlemen. This way. Hmm. Fascinating room, sir. Do you find it so? <laughs> I'm very proud of my collection. Yes, incredible number of cupboards and cabinets. Uh, that's my butterfly collection where you're standing, Doctor. In this case, gentlemen, my ancient coins. In that cabinet, the skulls of prehistoric men, flint instruments, early weapons. I dare say I've never seen so singular a collection. <laughs> My doctor lectures me about never going out. <laughs> but why should I, when there's so much to hold me here? You never go out? Oh, very seldom, Mr. Holmes. I'm not too strong. My research is very absorbing. You may well imagine what a terrific shock. Pleasant, but terrific it was when I learned of the will of my good fortune. If we find just one more man named Gary Deb, each of us receives five million dollars. Yes. Have you any specific plans for spending the money? Oh, I shall spend it enriching my collection. Tell me, when did John Garideb first speak to you? Uh, last Tuesday. Did he ask for money? No. Do you know of any ulterior motive he might have? None. You told him we were coming here today. I did. Holmes, what are you driving at? Have you any articles of great value in this collection? Oh, it's a good collection, but not very valuable. I see. How long have you been in these rooms? Oh, nearly five years. Ah. Now I see. You imagine I'm not mentally well. You see my collections, my fossils, bones, my skulls, my dusty room. You're suspicious. You picture me as a child locked forever in a room with his toys. That is what you two gentlemen are thinking. I know. And you're saying to yourselves, he's insane. What's he up to? Is he scheming with this John Garideb? Why, does every sight and every sound in this room speak of death? Here's a friendly message from the fine independent merchants who serve you with Clippercraft clothes. They say, come in soon and have first choice of their outstanding summer suits. Come in soon before the sudden heat wave creates a buying rush. They want to give you the very best in service, in selection, and in alterations that may be necessary. They want your new Clippercraft suit to be an advertisement of your good judgment in clothes. And you certainly display good judgment when you buy from the fine local store that sells famous Clippercraft suits at only $45. The exceptional quality of Clippercraft clothes is guaranteed by the Clippercraft label in every suit and sport jacket. The trademark derived from the staunch Clipper ships that established honest New England quality everywhere in the world. You can always rely on Clippercraft clothes and the store that proudly sells them. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes bearing the Clippercraft label. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits, sport jackets, and tropicals. In Manhattan, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th, 
John Wanamaker's Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street. In Brooklyn, Abram and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Dr. Watson, Dr. Watson, you and Mr. Holmes were visiting old Mr. Nathan Garadeb at his very frightening rooms. Yes, Mr. Harris. And Garadeb had a wild gleam in his eye as he ranted on about himself and about how suspicious he thought we were. You've exaggerated our viewpoint, Nathan Garadeb. Have I? I hope so. I hope you trust me. Naturally, I'm a gentle and very innocent and rather exhausted old man. Now, who might that be? I have it. I have it. I have it. Well, Mr. John Garadeb, eh? Mr. Holmes, I found the third man. Have you really? I hoped you'd be here, Mr. Holmes, to Watson, to hear the good news. Look, where is the third man? Who is he? How'd you find him? This newspaper. May I examine it? Five million dollars. Each of us collects five million dollars. What's in that newspaper? May, may I see? I've made inquiries in Birmingham. My agent there sent me this advertisement from a local paper. Read it. Let me see. Howard Garadeb, constructor of agricultural machinery, binders, plows, farmers' carts, buckboards, other appliances, estimates for artesian wells, apply Grosvenor Buildings, Aston. You see? Another man named Garadeb. Glorious! Glorious! I am rich! My collection will be the most magnificent in all history. Now, now we must, we must see this thing through. I've written to this Howard Garadeb and told him that you, Nathan, will see him at his office in Birmingham tomorrow afternoon. You want me to see him, John? Well, uh, wouldn't it be wise, Mr. Holmes? I'm, I'm sort of, well, uh, really a nondescript American, but Nathan here is a Britisher with solid references. Uh, look here, Nathan. All you must do is see the man, explain about the will, and get an affidavit of his existence. Oh, dear. I must leave this room... I haven't been out in years. Yes, but uh, you can be at Birmingham in a little over two hours. And I could follow you if there's any trouble. I'm not used to travel. I just know my room. The world outside is another world. I I'd be confused, afraid. I would urge you to go, Mr. Nathan. You would, Mr. Holmes? But the poor chap is elderly and infirm, Holmes. I believe the journey might be good for him. Eh, John Garadam? Oh, without a doubt. Look here, Nathan. I've come all the way from America, so well, it's little enough to ask you to go a hundred miles so as we might collect five million dollars. Will you go to Birmingham, Mr. Nathan? Uh, yes. I'll go. Fine. Fine, fine. I'll uh, call tomorrow and see you after Birmingham. Good night, gentlemen. A joyful good night. Mr. Ganadep. Yes, Mr. Holmes? I should like to examine your collection more closely. I could take you around now if you have time. Unfortunately, I have not. But while you're away tomorrow, would you object to my visiting these quarters? Oh, not at all. Mrs. Saunders in the basement will let you in with her key. Excellent. Oh, by the way, who is your house agent? His house agent, Holmes? Uh, Holloway and Steele in the Edgware Road. Uh, but why? I was wondering if this house was uh, Queen Anne or Georgian. Oh, Georgian, beyond doubt. Really? I should have thought it a little earlier. However, goodbye, Mr. Garadeb, and may you have every success in Birmingham. Thank you, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Well, it's astonishing they found the third man for the will, eh, Holmes? Is it, Watson? Did you notice nothing curious about the advertisement John Garadeb showed us in that newspaper? Jove, yes, I did. The word plow was misspelled. Yes, P-L-O-W, but we spell it P-L-O-U-G-H. It was bad English, but good American. Then the buckboards. That is American also. And artesian wells are commoner with them than with us. It was a typical American advertisement, but supposedly from an English firm. What do you make of that? Well, the same liar, this John Garadeb, inserted the advertisement himself. Yes, but then, then there isn't any Howard Garadeb in Birmingham at all. Quite. Nathan's off on a futile trip, Holmes. Precisely. I permitted him to go ahead, though. Deliberately. But why? Why, Holmes? You'll see, Watson. You'll see. Holmes, where were you all morning? I must warn you, Watson, I have more information. It points to an even greater menace than I thought. If you don't wish to continue... I shall see this through at your side, Holmes. Very well. I have identified this John Garadeb. Who is he? He is Killer Evans of sinister and murderous reputation. Killer Evans? Yes, I've seen Lestrade at Scotland Yard. I found this John Garadeb's face in the rogues' gallery. 
He's a native of Chicago, shot three men in the States. He escaped through political influence. Came to London in 1893, shot a fourth man over cards in a gaming club at Waterloo Road in January 1895. A bloodthirsty madman. The man he killed at the gaming club was a Roger Prescott. Yes? I've also been to the house agents, Watson. Nathan Garadev's weird quarters were occupied before by him by a man who answers the late Prescott's description. I see. John Garadev murdered the man who once lived in Nathan's quarters. And, and the next link? Take this revolver, Watson. This afternoon, as I arranged with Nathan Garadev, we shall ask his housekeeper to admit us to his room. And there, Watson, we shall learn the terrible secret of the three Garadevs. <laughs> Shall I pull up the blinds, allow some sunlight in homes? This room of Nathan's is so dark. No, Watson. <laughs> Skulls. Horrifying in the shadows. Ancient crumbling bones here. This whole place, you know, so musty. as the air of a graveyard. Why have you told me to be quiet? Why don't you look about? Because I'm expecting someone. Who? John Garadev. Alias Killer Evans. Well, well, how do you know he'll come? Why should he? Watson, the whole of this story about the three Garadevs, the will, the five million they'd inherit, is an invention. An invention of the killers. An invention? Yes. There isn't any Alexander Garadev who died and left such a will? There is not. John has woven his plot with remarkable cunning. But what did he want? That is what we're here to find out. There's nothing whatever to do with Nathan. This will was a device to send Nathan to Birmingham. John required such a device. Nathan was a fanatic about never leaving this room. But what's in this room? At first, I thought Nathan might have something valuable in his collection, something worth the attention of a criminal like John. The fact that Prescott, the gambler, lived here years ago points to a deeper reason. Wait, hear that? Yes, it's a key. Someone's at the front door. Quickly, let's hide behind that cupboard at the end of the room. Yes, right you are. Revolver ready? Yes, ready. Shh. The front door's opening. It's, it's John Garadin. Yes. Watch him. He's pushed the table to one side. Pull back the carpet. Now he, he's using a tool to pry up the boards of the floor. He's, he's lit a candle. Holmes, there's a, there's a trap door under that carpet. It leads to something below there. Get it, it's going down. Now Watson will seize him. Pleasant to see you again, Mr. Garadev. Holmes! If you look just behind you, you'll see that my revolver is pointed directly at your head. I believe it might be more accurate were we to dispense with your fictitious name and address you as Killer Evans. Well, I I guess you've been too much for me, Holmes, eh? You has played me for a sucker from the very beginning. I got to hand it to you. Of course, I've looked into the business end of a revolver before, and what I always do is... I thought... I have him, Watson. Stuck him with my pistol. You hurt? No, it's, it's nothing. Holmes, just a mere scratch. Look, look down there, Holmes. Through the trap door, beneath this room. There's machinery, papers, and bottles. Stacks of money there. Yes, Watson. A printing press. This is a counterfeiter's outfit. Just a moment. John is trying to speak. There's blood pouring over his face. He's trying to speak. That's, that's stuff down there. Oh, my head. That belonged to the greatest counterfeit of London ever saw, to Roger Prescott. No living man could tell a Prescott note from a bank of England. Prescott, the man you killed in the gambling duel. Yes. Let's make a deal. Those bundles of money. Prescott made them. They're perfect. Fit to pass anywhere. Worth a fortune. Take them, take them. Let, let, let me beat it. Huh? Not a bit of it. We're turning you over to Scotland Yard. I was the only one who knew where Prescott made the notes. Oh, my head. I had to get Nathan Garrett him out. That crazy bug hunter with a queer name living here on top of this, never knowing it. Dreaming of all the money in the world. When it was right beneath the dirty floorboards he walked on all night. Take, take, take the money. Let me go, please. I've done nothing. Please. Aside from a charge of attempted murder, sir, I'm quite sure that Scotland Yard has a formidable list of other subjects to uh, discuss with you. Please give the Yard a call, Watson. Yes, sir. Tell them we have our prisoner, John Garadev of Chicago. There's some doubt as to their familiarity with the name... And tell them the name of his captor, Sherlock Holmes of Baker Street. About the impact of that name, there's no doubt at all.
Dr. Watson, what became of Nathan Garraday? Well, Mr. Harris, he never got over the shock of his broken dreams. When his castle in the air tumbled down, it buried him beneath the ruins. He was last heard of at a uh, nursing home in Brixton. And uh, Killer Evans, Doctor? Well, the bird was returned to his roost at the penitentiary. Hmm. I'm sure, Doctor, you have an equally thrilling adventure planned for us next week. A breathtaking adventure it is indeed, Mr. Harris. I have given it the title, The Adventure of the Grey Pasha. It concerns a Derby favorite, a broken roof, and a trail of peculiar footprints. The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes.